Crawford. We are so happy to have Dr. Shri Shukla. And I love to see her smiling face. Despite the opposition and despite <laughs> the technolo- te- technical adversity, it's always an experience. It's a brand new day with experiences with Lori and Tammy and technology. But we we are happy to be here. Tammy is typing along. We are at the Unlocking and Freedom page that is public. And we're going to find a way to post this in our private group, Powered of Our Nature. Um, however, we're just happy to be here. And Tammy and I, we we are stubborn. <laughs> so we're like, we're going to make this happen one way or another. And being stubborn is just another way to say persistent. And we are just happy to be here to give it a, a more positive connotation, right? Instead of stubborn, yes. it's like persistent. So uh, Dr. Shree, go ahead. We definitely sorry. apologize. Thank you, Shree, for being so, so patient. It's probably from having that three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> that extra patience. Um, yeah, we haven't had this kind of this many problems, but yeah, we've tried several ways to get into our private Facebook group, our awesome group, and we're not able to, but we're able to at least record here and post. And so if anybody wants to join us, we would love to have you. Yeah. Yeah, so if you are in the Unlocking Freedom page watching this live, which I don't even see it happening, Tammy, but hey, we're we're recording it too, so we're going to just run with it. Um, let me know um, where you connecting from, etc. But we're just going to uh, start asking Dr. Shri Shukla. Uh, she is a health coach, integrative health coach, and we want to ask her about her about her interest in working with nature. And I love, I say Ayurveda, but I think you refer to it as a different <laughs> a different name. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. I, I did some semesters of Ayurveda and learned a little bit about that beautiful traditional medicine from, we were used to the Chinese traditional medicine, but then this is the, the traditional medicine from India, correct? Yeah, that's right. So tell us, tell us about you, what got so, you started yeah. in this journey. Yeah, we want to hear your story. I can't wait. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you so much for having me. First things first. And um, yeah, fine. I've been in the health arena for a really long time. And I have a PhD in health social work. And I worked in hospitals and research centers. So I was uh, always both feet in, in the world of health but um, when I got struck with a health crisis in my early 30s, that was the time that I started to explore other modalities because there is um, all our interactions with the mainstream healthcare system. They teach us something about um, there's a very strong curative line to the to the healthcare system. But we don't really talk about like our mind and our the, the stressors in our life or how the pace of our life or how our surroundings are really affecting our well-being. And um, it was really interesting because at the time I had six or seven physicians. I had an, a team of experts and I used to feel very surprised that, you know, they are working on my body, but they don't really like talk to each other. You know? And so I had a hematologist and um, uh, all kinds of specialists, but uh, the, it, it really su- used to surprise me. And uh, really, it boiled down to the, to the fact that I wanted more personal empowerment. I wanted to understand the root cause and I wanted to be able to do things on my own instead of um, making several trips to mainstream physicians all the time. I think at some point when a person is is stuck with a health crisis, they really it can wear down your entire life because all your time and resources are going into building that up. And so I, when Ayurveda was already in my surroundings, because it is an ancient healing system from India, it's about two to, two to 5,000 years old, anywhere from that stage. And the primary philosophy is that our bodies are made up of the five big elements of nature. So Air, ether, fire, water, and space, uh, fire, water, and earth it are the five big elements that our bodies are made of. And it is the balance or the imbalance of these elements within our body that then leads to disease or well-being. And we are all a little bit imbalanced at all points of time, but 
when we go extremely out of balance or there is one dosha and the doshas are made up of these elements, then we can experience a, um, aggravated illness or disease. And so really it boils down to having day-to-day -day practices in place and, and a deep understanding of our own mind-body system that can uh, help us prevent illness. And even when there is a problem, then there is a whole other set of interventions that Ayurvedic interventions that can also come in for um, healing and, curate, and a curative way. So, um, can you tell us a little bit more about your illness or what led to your illness when you were? Yeah, I don't, I don't actually like to talk about what happened because um, I feel like that doesn't, um, like I want to be helpful to people and rather than focus on like the disease itself. But I can tell you about what, when I reflect back, I feel like I didn't have any particularly bad habits, you know, uh, but I had um, a sit. I I would say I spent I didn't sleep very well. That was one of the things I and that was on purpose because I was working very hard on my work, and I did not cook a lot. I was um, just like I think it was like an emotional spiritual state of mind, which was not spiritual specifically emotional maybe. And definitely just like not be not being in tune with my body. That's really what it is. It's like using our body, just like moving with it, almost as if it's a, as if it's like it just does its own things on a daily basis without really listening to the clues that it was constantly giving me. And when I reflect back, I did have a lot of clues. You know, I the the clues were were, were there, but I didn't know how to work with them. I didn't know what meaning to make out of it. And uh, I think that, and I did, I there were some good practices in, in place already. For example, I was already uh, really into meditation. I used to meditate a lot and that was very helpful. But I had to like gather my um, meditation practice all over again, post the illness. And um, yeah, I mean, um, Really, our bodies are always giving us clues. They are embedded in our lifestyle. They are embedded in our thoughts as well, because toxic thoughts also do lead to one form of illness or the other. And uh, toxic emotion can really accumulate in our body over a period of time. And it some it's hard to really understand this, but physical disease, especially when it is big and serious, it can be... Um, there can be a, a, a fairly long trajectory to it building up. It's building up over time in the body before it fully manifests. And that's the time when we typically go to the physician and looking for an intervention to cure because we've not been doing the prior work. And it is always possible to hold any form of illness early on. Right. Not I, I don't want to like make it sound like it's always possible because that puts a lot of pressure on people, but it is often possible. We can we can build our immunity better. We can uh, sleep better. There's a lot of lifestyle things that we can do. And really for the mental health piece as well, there's a lot of things we can do. And I found all of these things in nature, really. Ayurvedic, Ayurveda is completely holistic, natural. The medicines are coming up plant-based. The, the, there is an emphasis on food. There is an em emphasis on doing yogic practices and postures, which is a mind-body union even though we traditionally like we often do it as a form of exercise yoga but yoga when done correctly is really a mind body union and that's really the way it should be approached right well, we appreciate you sharing um what you wanted to share about your journey and i wanted to ask you if there's you've mentioned meditation you've mentioned food and the mind body because i i guess like instead of like oh i'm going to this yoga session i think what i'm hearing is like yoga is like lifestyle rather than just a session to work out right mm -hmm. and other than that in your journey in nature what was what has been a main key component or factor of an herb a specific herb a plant or mm -hmm. just walking in nature what's been a major fact I know it's a combination of things but something that you probably weren't even aware of that made a big difference in this journey 
Sure. So I would say that what made a big difference in my journey was um, hanging in there, having faith in my body. That was the biggest thing. And that is uh, both a physical and a mental thing to go with. Because when we are struck with something serious, the one thing that we start to doubt is our is is the body itself, right? Like, and I had that fear. I was afraid of, okay, what is going to happen next? Because we, we tend to lose trust in the basic functioning of our, we forget how intelligent the body is. And that what's just happened is just a reflection of uh, of one aspect going out of balance. So I think for me, it was really like mental and emotional to find uh, faith back in my body. And then I would say, yes, there was a host of different things I did, which is like, yes, nature walks was certainly a part of it. But really, it was also like tapping into tapping back into my like spiritual pieces and um, really reestablishing my connection with the divine, because it does crisis like these, they, they throw you off completely. You really start to question, like, why me? Why did this happen to me? And what wrong did I do? Like, these are very common questions that come up. And there are no perfect answers to these. So if one has to uh, sort of rebuild their uh, relationship with divinity. And I think Ayurveda helped me to strengthen that relationship. So there's the nitty gritty of like the practices we do, but there is no one thing that can heal us if our belief system is not in place. And so it's very important to do the do any work, any healing work from that energetic space. And nobody, I, I don't expect anybody, including myself, to like be a master in any of these practices, although there are people out there who have expertise in uh, in yoga or like they do, they just spiritually evolve through that yogic practice and through that mind body union but um for the for the ordinary person for any of us i think it's uh, just consistency it's having faith it's having the right tools it's having support and these are the kinds of things that they do lead to healing right well if you don't i don't know if you saw the quote i put on this morning um i put if you don't make time for your wellness, mm -hmm. you'll be forced to make time for your illness. Yeah. Um, because like you said, I agree with you. It's a lifestyle. Um, it's all about, so no matter if, you know, even just to have healthy looking skin or hair, it's what we put in our bodies. And it's not just food. It's like you said, it's, it's everything around us. It needs to be positive and not negative because if you think about it, so if like if you're around negative stuff all the time and everything, you're just going, going and not taking time to meditate, to eat healthy, um, you listen to like media all the times, you're around negative people and on and on, um, I can see you, you just start going downhill. And yes, I, and I totally tap into God um, because that's me. I couldn't live a day without and I've been there exactly where you were. Um, so it was like, okay, having a team of doctors and trying to thinking back going, oh, what am, what did I do wrong? Or what could I do right? Um, you know, how can I improve my health? And you don't realize that, I don't know, sometimes we just take, um, we're so used to stuff that we feel like, oh, it's, it's always going to be here. It's kind of like when I was talking to that. Thank you, Patty, um, the other day in Dubai, they had lost power. And it's like, you don't realize how important having electricity is until you lose it or, you know, or your health until you lose it. Yeah. And here's yeah. the thing I realized that it's, it's health is almost like a puzzle, but it is not a one big puzzle for the whole world to resolve. It's really a very personal puzzle, right? Everybody has their own puzzle. And this is something that Ayurveda really emphasizes because we have the three doshas and we'll examine what dosha is predominant, what energies are predominant in the body naturally. And so depending on that basis, that's the foundational piece based on which recommend, recommendations are made about what will work for the individual.
and so that we we really help with the with resolving your personal puzzle and like everything that's biohacking for you yeah yeah my husband went through a health crisis too and I, I i totally get it when you say i don't want to focus on what it was or what the diagnosis was i totally get it and that you're entitled to that right but i also agree with that people were treating my husband as if he were giving a death sentence and one thing that he was very sure about is like no you're not going to tell me what to do is the divine it's for us is heavenly father or god and my own efforts in getting better and he he went about looking for solutions and wanting to uh, speaking of persistence right or being stubborn he wanted to prove the doctors were amazed at how everything and and I'm not bragging I'm just being humble and being thankful to the divine because it wasn't his time yet or divine intervention but also with the habit changes he made it was very clear that Yes, the body heals. And like you say, these modalities gave him that personal empowerment. Because it's like, it's not what you say. You're not the gods of health here on earth. <laughs> you know a lot and you're instrumental in the life of many. But you're not going to give me a death sentence. You're not going to, to tell me what is it that I can do or accomplish or how much time I have here on earth. And <laughs> so that that makes a big difference. A big difference is like our demeanor, our desire to not allow that sentence or that diagnose to define who we are or to define the rest of our story. And I just admire that that happened to you, too. And you made the adjustments that you needed to make with all the recommendations and, and this amazing science of and uh, modality of Ayurveda. Um, yeah, yeah. I I feel like I'm so I'm at a point now where I have a lot of admiration for modern science and what it can do, and I feel like a blend of complementary therapies works amazingly well. So if we find good physicians and we continue to be under their care, especially when an illness has already occurred, a problem has already showed itself. Uh, but we also have an integrative health practitioner working with us, I think that's a very sweet, good spot to be at. And uh, there, there's obviously a lot of different things going around in the health space. And uh, we consume a lot of different, a lot of them, believing that they have benefits and some of them do. But the beauty of Ayurveda is that it's very personalized, exact, customized, to the individual kind of a medicine. And that's really where the power of this medication is. The other, the other problem is like people sometimes think of the herbs as solutions. And it's like, then we are looking at Ayurveda as a mainstream medicine piece, right? Like you just pop the pill and it's done. But Ayurveda is so much more. It's really making a lot of different uh, small little changes and finding them to be comfortable for ourselves, right? Like we have to also be comfortable with what we are doing. Otherwise, it's not sustainable. And uh, then finding finding the right herbs. I feel like those come, the, those are second and third and fourth, probably like depending on the individual, the, those are the secondary steps. But first is always the way we are living. And, and also our thoughts, the way we are thinking, that's so important because our, our mind is always talking to our body and it's it's always showing us symptoms and so like when I work with mental health as well it's people who have serious mental health or even ordinary day-to-day uh, -day depression or just sad like seasonal depression your body can show signs of deterioration in one way or the other and these signs are very different in different individuals so it can be anything from um, from headaches to constipation to body aches it just shows up very differently. And that has to be considered because we are a whole um, integrative system. We we can't just uh, be treated with medication for, for depression or anxiety. It, it's not sustainable to do that. It's not long-term. And plus many of these medications also have side effects. Then, then it's like, oh, you're mentally feeling better, but you are, <clears throat> you're actually having, <clears throat> sorry, these, these physical symptoms. Um, that make you want to go back to another physician. Right. So then the healthcare system is like falling back on its on its own self. 
Yeah. Well, it was like a good phys- friend who's a physician told me once, it's like, you have to listen to your own gut. And remember, you hired us. We're your team. You hired so you can question us, you know. And a lot of times people are afraid to even question their doctors or ask them questions or say, well, this is really affecting. And especially for women, um, just because women have a, sometimes a higher tolerance of pain. Um, and so a lot of times the doctor's like, well, you look healthy. I don't see any problems. Um, but they're really not. Those doctors really aren't listening, you know. So it's like. Um, you definitely have to listen. And the mental health area is is huge. And like you said, people need to listen. Um, I I see so much anymore. And it's like you see these terms, um, they're, but they're not, nobody's really helping people, you know. Um, and I know it's like my sister uh, uh, works in the mental health, and I've worked in the mental health before when I was younger, but they really can't, they're like limited. And like you said, Shri, is you, you've got to be there to help them emotionally, um, help get them. And sometimes it's even just eating healthier. Okay. An example would be of when we were doing property management, um, this, we got this report that this guy was going crazy and the cops came and they like, you know, handcuffed him and, were had him to the ground. Well, he, um, actually was, um, diabetic and, um, he just, he needed to have a shot or something. And that's all it was. But because he was so out there, they thought he was an alcoholic or a druggie or, you know, and they didn't even realize that he actually just needed some medicine. And then he, and he was so embarrassed the next day, he didn't even realize he became this totally different person. Kind of like the little snicker bar commercial, right? It's like the hungry, you know, it's like, okay, I need some food or something really fast or because I get angry. And I think um, a lot of times people don't even realize just those little things might trigger something. Yeah, in general, I think that's just lack of uh, awareness, but it's also lack of uh, being aware in the moment, because we might know a lot, but when something is happening in front of us, um, that's the moment to behave or to act or to think differently. And that requires um, a certain level of pre-built awareness to be able to act on the moment. Yeah. So question for you. So what do you say to, because anymore, and I threw this question out before, um, on a different show was you hear the word, um, anxiety all the time, um, Mm -hmm. from all of these different kids and stuff, because growing up, we, you know, it's like, you didn't have a chance. You never really heard that word. Um, you, you, or we heard it in different ways, you know, it's like, yeah, we have problems. We're stressed out or this is how you deal with it. Um, but it seems like it's getting worse, not better. Yeah. You know, it's like, so what What do you say to that? Sure. So anxiety has always has been there, but it is probably at its height in the current world because of our environment and because we lead typically very fast paced lives. So within the first two hours of getting up, we typically want to um, cook and clean and get ready ourselves, which is three or four or five members in the household and uh, rush to our offices. And then there is a long work day ahead, which is full of meetings and conversations and problem solving, which is mental hard work and uh, documentation, which takes something out of our eyes and something out of our um, energy, the whole energetic system. But there is too much of it. It's it's almost like, and so anxiety really is a problem of not being able to prioritize because there are way too many things to be done. And the mind is not really absorbing um, the quantity of it. And it's not really being, it's not really able to, and focus right because when when we are anxious we have low ability to focus but in a general way in ayurvedic sense this is like a vata problem which is like a windy problem in the in the brain 
And so we try to resolve this with a lot of different techniques. But we also would typically want the individual to uh, just improve their, uh, this, their sleep hours. Like that's something everybody can do. Also, anxiety, like all other mental issues, also has a, a spectrum. So people, somebody can be slightly anxious and then somebody can be very severely anxious and you can see their whole body move with the anxiety, right? And so there, there would be different levels of uh, uh, intervention for that kind of anxiety. Now, for personally, for me, I do use talk therapy somewhat. It's not everything, but because I'm well-trained with my background in this, I like to use some talk therapy, but then I use everything else as well that's coming from Ayurved. And oils are excellent for anxiety. So people who suffer from anxiety should definitely use all kinds of oils. But but again, like I said before, this has to be really customized. If you are listening to our conversation and you go there and start using oils, I cannot promise it will be effective for you because it has to really be customized to the individual. And that's where these things start to work. But I typically tend to do like add other things as well because that's like food foods which are actually helpful with mental health and a lot of different practices that are combined. But I think anxiety is on the rise, like you mentioned earlier, and it really has to do with excessive use of technology, sleeping with the with our phones under our pillows and uh, things that we are not made for. Nature did not make us for living in this way. Nature did not make us for this like hyper mental activity. And that is where... Uh, we are losing out on our health. Yeah. Well, I had a friend um, who's a doctor. Well, actually, he's a, what would you call it? He's a pot motivational positive speaker. And um, he works with um, different, he's, and I remember him saying, ask the question, what is causing your anxiety? Or what do you think? Instead of just this whole, you know, um, usually there's like a lot of times there's like one more thing, but I agree with you. I think going to technology to calm our anxiety, anxiety does not help us. So I always tell them, go on a walk. I know I do. It's like, if I'm like, it's like frustrated with like our tech problems or something, I usually go on a walk outside. Yeah. Going on a walk is a great idea on a nature walk, but also like reading a book, because we are so far removed from actually using, from reading in a peaceful environment. So just giving ourselves a couple of hours to read something that's soothing and not like crime fiction. is It's just my recommendation. You can read crime fiction as well. But if you want to like really soothe your mind, body system, then reading something that's a little, little calmer, a little inspiring uh, can always trend in that that mind body connection and in a in a quiet space you know it and you read always read at your pace sometimes you can read a paragraph and then reflect on it for half an hour and you're lost in your thoughts but you're still focused on that one paragraph you read you read and that's a really beautiful thing for the for your mind to happen I appreciate all this because you also said something about it's excessive uh, over simulation I think with media and the phones and all that and um, hyper attention to many things. And I think when people are scrolling on their phones, it's things that are out of their control. And I can totally see, Dr. Shri, that if you decide to read a book, it you made that decision to specifically focus your attention to one thing rather than what's given to you left and right, depending on where you, when you, when you, because sometimes I find myself like we are, I think we, if we can admit that we are all victims of this, you know, digital distraction I sometimes say why do I care like oh did you know da, 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 da. and I'm like no I don't care boom and I keep swiping until I see something better or more inspiring but at the same time I realize myself why am I here why am I not doing something else and I'm just allowing all these strangers distract me with what they think is important for that what they think should be important to me instead of me determining what is important to me. And like you said, is also a lack of priority and not being able to um, prioritize. So I appreciate you mentioning that. Um, I, 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 
I do clinical hypnosis, Dr. Shri, just for you to know, and I'm always trying to spin a negative word or a negative connotation to a positive one. And I have seen in scripture when prophets and things like that have said, we are anxiously engaged in a good cause. And that is a very way to, a good way to spin the word anxiety from a negative detrimental uh, feeling or emotion we feel we're, we're to be anxiously engaged in a good cause and personal development and integrative wellness mm-hmm. it can be a good thing it can be inspiring it can be elevating it it can help us focus in the one thing we're actually engaged in we're actually anxiously excited about our upcoming trip we're anxiously you know so there's a different way to, to see that word but nowadays this word has been just so abused and used and it is true because it's happening it's a reality that's happening at the same time i just love the fact that other than medication if it's a chemical imbalance i tell i tell people that i know and that are on medication i said remember that's not the only solution many things it doesn't matter if you have the medication the magic solution even me with asthma I'm like, there's many other components and factors. And if we look at ourselves as a whole individual, food also triggers some allergic reactions and asthma or upper respiratory reactions and things like that. So we need to be aware that this is an issue that's happening. But then I love the fact that you said reading a book, just calming down, meditation, and also oils. Those senses, right? The the smells can calm us down. And I was just gonna say that from what I've learned from Ayurveda, Ayurveda is that um Abiyanga, which is like massaging your own um, skin with the oils, that also helps me calm down. Like me treating myself well. Absolutely. Like <laughs> what do you have any experiences or you want to explain better than what I'm doing, what the practice is? Uh, Absolutely. Abhyanga. So Abhyanga is the practice of using oils on our body. And uh, there are short form Abhyangas, which can be done just on the head and behind the ears and a little bit on the hands and feet. So that's a quick Abhyanga practice. But uh, the better for more therapeutic effects is a full body Abhyanga. If somebody is uh, in a rush, they can still do it for half an hour, one hour before taking a shower. And then they can just take a shower and go on for the rest of the day. And doing it during winters is amazing because if you're living in a cold place or it's cold, um, uh, you, you're just in cold weather all the time, it's very, very helpful. But then there's a different set of oils to be used in the in the summer for people who live, live in warmer climates. So yes, the, these are these are powerful therapeutic, uh, have therapeutic effects and they are directly connected with nature because the ingredients in the oils are really coming from uh, natural ingredients. These are all like plants and everything that grows naturally in nature. And so so you have a direct relationship with them then. Yes, there there is one viewer hey, watching live in, in our other page, Unlocking Freedom in Nature. Aiki, Aika, is she saying, I think that the years of isolation, which this is very true, the years of isolation due to COVID has infected the majority of the population with a touch of anxiety. That, that um, I agree with you, Aika, that sensation of I had my life planned and something else, someone else bigger than than most of us that has so much power inflicted this uncertainty on us, this, this terror on us because we didn't know what was happening. And there was such, I, I don't like to use this term, but fear mongering, (laughs) there was a lot of infliction of fear and unknown and terror on this big monster that's microscopic. And uh, that also, I, I know instilled a lot of, mess the mess we're in right now that we're still trying to recover from yeah absolutely so um ayurveda has a very, even more special place post covid for some of those reasons because we are very interested at this point in time in rebuilding our immunity and doing so naturally and holistically and uh, at home completely by ourselves so that's one physical aspect of it that we can definitely use all these foods and herbs and all the modalities that come with Ayurveda to our advantage in building immunity so that we have some resilience towards any new viruses. That's one aspect of it. Now, the other aspect of it is the uncertainty. And 
this is a very mental and emotional component. And uh, as human beings, the thing is like we have excessive attachments to our life's plans. Some of it is fine. But when it's excessive attachment, we have to like do emotional work to let go of those pieces because um, guess what? The world is very, very big and nature has multiple forces acting in a lot of different unpredictable ways. And um, it, it can take over some time. But if we think of it in a different way, like sometimes when there's a war going on in the world, we have really managed to create a problem on our own without really nature doing anything to do with it, right? So like, how would you compare COVID and a war which is going on in 2024? Like how, so nature, nature's forces are really trying to like create some kind of its own balance and imbalance, but we are also doing things to ourselves which are completely out of order, right? So living with uncertainty is, is a whole other overarching theme and I think we should have some plans but we should not have plans which are rigid because here's the thing like at the macro level yes COVID threw the whole world off but at the micro level my illness threw me off something happens in life and it throws us off and our like our plans have less meaning as compared to the meaning that we attach to it Right. That's true. Our plans, our plans have meaning. It's not like they don't. They have meaning. They're meaningful. If we didn't have anything to look forward to, I don't know what life would be. But but our plans have to have immense flexibility, which is brewed with love. Yes. Tammy and I went through that this year, right, Tammy? We had some oh, yeah. Plans. We, we had plans so, um, for one of our retreats to be in Barbados in May, but um, <laughs> things came up. And so we had to switch to next year. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's having good friends that we can, like Lori and I are good friends. So we bounce each stuff off each other. So one's down, we pull each other up, or Ike, she cheers me on. Um, so it's always having those nice friends around. And I think like what you're, it's a lifestyle. I think I, COVID, it's like COVID didn't hit me that hard because I've been sicker. Um, but I was spending all my time out in nature yeah. as yeah. well, you know? So but then they started trying to forbid that too. When they started right. putting. Uh, um, uh, luckily I live in the country, but I yeah, couldn't so imagine good. living in town during yeah. that time. Um, because to me, nature is the healing, opening our windows yeah. and doing those things. And so, so many times, um, like you were saying, Shri, is people that have a tendency to want their kids just to give them a video game instead of getting them outside, mm -hmm. you know, and experiencing different things. And there's play, time and place for video games, I believe, but not 24, 20 hours a day. <laughs> well, I mean... So here's the thing, like I'm somebody who is a proponent of putting Ayurveda in context because it's an ancient system and um, my PhD is also from a very modern health perspective. And uh, as humans, like we are, we are living in a certain definite context and our context includes technology, which has been, which for example, was very helpful during COVID. If we couldn't even sit and watch movies, I mean, that was one or didn't have telephones right. for bed. Like, the connectivity which was broken down would be broken down even further, right? So I think it's really about, um, for me personally, it's really about like when I work with, with my clients, it's all about like bringing it to their context, to their lifestyle and to their context. It's not about having this ancient healing system and doing everything to perfection. It's, it's just about them and uh, making enough adjustments that they can see the healing effects of it. So, so Ayurveda is not is Ayurveda has to be brought to context for it to be able to function in the current world. So there's nothing nothing polarizing about it in, in my sensibilities. Yeah, the the practitioner my husband went to um, his his little company logo is combining ancient wisdom with modern day 
medicine and technology and it was just beautiful a perfect uh, balance harmony absolutely yeah. maybe not perfect but very balanced harmony between the ancient knowledge with the modern day things he even asked my husband how are you emotionally what's your connection to the divine you get you have to get it right with god you have to take all that anger outside of you go out in a mountain top and and scream and yell at all those from years ago, all that anger you have, it was such an amazing experience and a holistic approach. Time goes by super fast when we were having fun, I just realized, right, Tammy? And Dr. Sri has, I mean, you are there so calm and with so much knowledge and so much wisdom to share. Every time you we ask you a question, you give us a great answer. Or when we make a comment, you give us a very great and deep reflection on what we have said. And I think you're a living example of what you teach and what you practice um, with that aura of just calmness <laughs> and knowledge and wisdom. So thank you so much for being here. I key, let me see if there's, I think that Lori Beard hit the nail on the head, keyword balance. Oh, thank you, it Ica. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. definitely a balance. And um, because of that, that's why Lori and I actually ha are doing retreats. We want people to realize there is a balance in life because I mean, I watch movies and stuff and I love doing those things, but I love going and spending time out in nature. But it's like, if I spent all my time outside, I wouldn't get anything done inside and there's time and place for everything. So it is a balance and we have some amazing retreats coming up. Um, and we appreciate you so much, Sri, for being here and for your patience today. And I guys saying that she appreciates the wisdom you've shared and she's wanting to, uh, she's saying that she looks forward to learning more from you. Is there a website people can go to? We will add it here, but if you can just tell it to us right now for it's, those viewers. Yeah, it's viva by shri.cohere.live. So viva is V-I-V-A by shri, S-H-R-I dot cohere dot live that's my website and i have some freebies that i'd love to share so please come hop in on my instagram which is also viva by shri that's where i hang out the most and i'd love to connect with anybody who <laughs> there, yeah. uh, awesome Fanta fantastic thank you so much and uh dr shri like tammy said we are offering personal development retreats uh signature adventures and you, we know you take care of people and our retreats are designed for those caretakers, people that pour their souls out for others. And then we want to give you guys also a uh, time for you to breathe and renew and reset. Um, so if you want more information about that, just um, let us know. We will be happy to share. And thank you so much for what you're already doing um, with the community and those that follow you and, um, listen to you so thank you and yeah, we'll thank see you for your hard work so. thank yeah. you so much thank that. you so much for having me thank you okay we'll see you later bye Ika. bye Ika. thanks everyone for watching <laughs>